So today was the first day of Terreno Adriatico. So the time trial was slightly longer than the traditional time trial in Vio di Camiore. Um, and it was basically 15 minute TT, so 13 kilometers here. Out and back, very, very flat. Some interesting results of Ghana 1, Remco, good result. Dalsit, super, super strong. Um, only other real ones that I think I want to pick out. Miguel Angel Lopez, really impressive. Gegenhart, decent as well. Carapaz, I thought was quite an impressive time, being Bodnar. Matthews, etc. Vingegaard had a shocker for his standards. Youngle's not great either. Padun as well, uh, a minute back. So large gaps, I would say. Like, obviously, the first five, six is pretty close. But after that, decent gaps on a 14k TT. I guess it is pan flat. And also the first stage. So not too much fatigue in the legs, which often can, you know, uh, make the GC guys go a bit stronger than the pure TT boys. Uh, but nonetheless, an interesting stage. So first of all, I'm just going to go over power data. And then we'll go over some equipment changes, especially with Remco, which is exciting to see. So this is the segment here, which I which I created. Um, Tadi Pogacar has the com, of course, because Ghana is on Strava. But Alex Dalsip, really strong result from him, 457 watts. I haven't seen watts that high from him for a long time. But you can see the sort of level here around 450, 440. Obviously, CDAs are, are going to be different between the guys. Um, for instance, Richard Carapaz is probably doing like 380, 390, maybe for 15 minutes, but is obviously smaller, so has a significantly lower CDA. Velasco, again, pretty impressive from him, but you can see the sort of numbers guys are doing. And also see like, you know, uh, 450 watts, but finishes almost a minute back. So, you know, it's not all the watts, it's obviously CDA. So we'll go over to Alex Dowsett's numbers. And to be honest, like 5.8 watts per kilo for 15 minutes is really strong, even on a climb, but, you know, obviously for a, for a time trial effort, super impressive as well. So he went out really hard, 475 watts, so 6 watts per kilo for 6 minutes. Then there's sort of this turnaround section, which you'll see on the map. It's basically a, a long UE, effectively. Um, so here, again, doesn't doesn't lose too much time, but you can get time could be gained if you took big risk in the corner, which people Ganna did. And then the 8 minutes back, it was a tailwind, so you can see with the speed, 56 kilometers an hour, 5.8 watts per kilo, 458 watts. So you can see a good... Uh, Good uh, positive split here because with the headwind out, it makes sense to do more watts. If anything, you probably could try to do even more watts on the way out and slightly less on the way back. Uh, but anyway, super impressive ride from Dowsett. So that's the sort of level you'll see. Um, Team and Aronson, uh, a bit of a smaller guy, like 10 kilos lighter and super impressive numbers, six and a half watts per kilo for 15 minutes. I've seen him do six and a half for 20 before um, in January in 2020, I think it was. Really impressive ride from the boy, 442 watts on the way out. Um, on the way back, 474. So you can see this guy did not pace it well because you might say, okay, negative split, but come on, he, he put it in the wrong parts. He could have had a really good ride today. Really, really good ride. If he'd done the opposite and if he'd done 470 on the way out and 450 on the way back, he would have been similar to, to Dowsett because look, he goes 49 kilometers an hour compared to Dowsett's like, um, and then goes 57 here. And if we look at Dowsett again, first half 52 second half um 56 so you can see the difference in speed is pretty similar despite the same power obviously it's like two kilometers an hour faster but the faster you go the increase in speed obviously has a less um less important impact because you're going for that time less if you know what i mean so when if you're going slower if you can increase the average speed then that's obviously going to have an effect over a larger period of time and therefore increase your speed higher um than on the shorter period of time um, if that makes sense, because it's, you know, obviously the slow, when you're going slower, it takes you longer. So that's why it's really important that he, he shouldn't have done the, the pacing he did. But anyway, super impressive from the boy. It must have felt nice to do 57 kilometers out on the way home. But nonetheless, super impressive ride. This is Carapaz's ride, but no power data. Um, and Ghana looked really good. Anyway, Cycling Weekly, uh, well, not Cycling Weekly, sorry, Cycling News have uh, tried to get paywall up. It's really easy. You just go on incognito mode. And then you can have unlimited access to articles. It's stupid. They need to learn that people aren't going to pay for cycling news because it's useless. Anyway, this is People Ganna. Enough about my rant about cycling news. You can see he's got the error base layer on the sides because you're not allowed to have strips on top of it. He's got his custom extensions. Nothing to change. Yet quite a nice bike. Here's Bahrain setup. Again, vision bars, really helmet, vision, uh, Metron's front and rear. Probably tubeless, in, I think. But again, dual double ring. No one's running a single ring setup. Similar setup to Ghana here. Princeton Carbon Works front and rear. Looks like a fairing. Uh, Richie Port, decent time, but nothing crazy for the boy. Um, but anyway, nothing too crazy. Then we've got Michael Matthews. We'll go into them later. Uh, got BMC, rim brake as well. HJC helmet I do like, but 
pretty poor results from AG to our boys. Caicedo, you know, when you see this on the back, um, it's really not good because the airflow over the radio is really not good and you want to have it on the front um, just because of anything. It sort of closes this body, um, this area here a little bit more, which is more aero. Um, but yeah, on the back is really, really bad. So would not recommend that. And you'll see all the top guys like Taddy um, definitely don't do that. Uh, so this is the setup for um, bike exchange this year. Got four spoke on the front, Kdex wheels. They're supposed to be pretty quick. Got um, old school giant Trinity, no disc brakes. I've heard a disc brake bike is coming out from some rumors. Um, he's also got the ride sync bars. These aren't the uh, integrated sort of like carbon handlebars, but you can see there's the nice setup. Does it does look good? The giant rivet helmet. I have a phobia of, and I think is really slow. But that's just my um, my uh, my views. Now we're going to go through Honor A because we want to look at Remco. Look at this front wheel. This is a Rovar 64. I think that's actually about 70 mil deep, and then a classic Rovar rear disc. But we'll look at Remco in a minute, and you'll see he does have a different position. Um, quick step, obviously good at time trialings. Uh, there's Cavendish. There's Greg. There's Guerrero. There's um, Thibaut Pino looking pretty good as well. He, all of FDJ have integrated handlebars, which are custom made for them. They've got a, a tri spoke on the front, and um, I believe a Roval 43. Oh no, 32. Was it 432 or something? The Roval disc on the back. Running GP uh, TT tires, not 5000S, which is an interesting decision. Um, then we've got the faster setup around the Cervelo P5. Um, you know, they go to Love and they're in the wind tunnel. They're super, super quick. They've got Eric Roach front wheel, Roval on the back. Uh, I don't know when Shimano are going to make a disc. Then we got Scott. Nothing really too interesting. Again, this helmet freaks me out. The Scott helmet, I don't like it. Um, but you know, uh, Damian Caruso again. Viviani, uh, Matthias Norsgaard always super strong time trialist. Movistar always have good setup on a canyon, apart from Abba's helmet, which again is terrifying. Uh, Pino more photos. Don't care about track. There's UAE. They'll be going one by as well. K Gegenhart loves the head down position. Nothing to really report. Again, you can see the super deep aero front wheel, which I think is a huge difference. And a nice laser helmet as well. Looks really, really good. Sepkus, again, not super idle. Uh, same with Jai Hindley. Um, probably a better better setup now than he used to have on the specialized shiv. But again, Rovar front wheel. Ala Philippe, similar head up. Not super good position. It's all looks decent position, but... You can see Jenny Moscon, not good position. Uh, Lawson Craddock had a good ride. Again, giant river helmet, basically same setup. He gets integrated bar and, uh, integrated, not integrated, sorry. I keep saying integrated. I mean uh, carbon handlebars, like the custom 3D ones from Ride Sync. Edo Alfini, uh, Padun, decent position. But again, radio on the back. They need to sort that out. Cannondale, Drapak, or whatever they're called. EF Education for Steezy Post. Sagan, hilarious. Um, so Mikael Björg, again, he's got the custom extensions. He's on a one by as well. You can see no in the chain ring. That is good to see. Uh, turns, he looks like he could be on a one by as well, which is always exciting to see. Then I want to go through Israel. So Alex Dals had a really good ride today. He said there was a new head, um, a factor rear wheel, um, and also a super, super deep front wheel as well. Uh, I think that's a black ink, but it looks like an 80 or a 90, which is, I think is really important. I think people have gone to see that having a really deep front wheel. It's important. GP5000 S2s or whatever they're called. Uh, S, I think they're just called GP5000 S. Front and rear. The Ghana, which again is interesting. Uh, and I think goes to show they're probably pretty quick tyres. Um, Ghana's position, perfect. And here we go, Remco. So if we look here, this is an aero front to front wheel. I'm almost certain. Mainly because you can see the weird valve thing here. I think it goes to show that people are willing to bin off specialised if it's a like TT boy who's going to win. And I think again it shows that realistically the front wheel you just want it as deep as possible i think 100 mil deep is probably the best if you could go any deeper it's only 110 it'd probably be quicker i think you know just the separation of the air obviously if you think is a percentage wise of how much is going to stay attached it's far higher when it's uh when it when it's bigger obviously like if you think if it was a 20 mil thing you'd only get like a tiny amount here that would stay attached but if here it's got you've got this whole 100 mil here whole 100 mil there as well I'm not an aerodynamicist at all, so I might be chatting absolute rubbish, but that's from what I understand. Nice helmet as well. Hands super close to the bars, which is very good. And a cute hip angle, but can still power the power, which is very important. Um, and there's Tade Pogaccio as well. Um, you know, decent position. Not the best position. I think when his head's up, I, I don't think it's an unreal position. Um, when his head's down, it's okay. Uh, but I think, he, you know, he said he went to the wind tunnel and he didn't enjoy the, the new position. So, you know, whatever works. Tuba star on the front, I think disc on the rear. Uh, sorry, tub on the rear because they don't have a the tubeless disc. Sorry, I can't get my words out. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this little video. 
about TT analysis as well as the positions, the kit, and the power. So anyway, cheers for watching. I'll see you in the next one. You look in.